Hi, and welcome to British Girl Bakes. This nursery rhyme book cake is an adorable idea for a first birthday, and you can personalise it with the birthday boy or girl's favourite nursery rhyme characters. This is a full tutorial for the book cake and the nursery rhyme characters. For the time-lapse video of me making the cake, click the link at the top of the video screen. First, we're going to make a giant book cake with sheet cakes. Bake however many sheet cakes you need to serve your number of guests. I've baked four quarter sheet layers to serve 40 people. Secure your cake layers onto a cake board using dollops of buttercream. I'm using my four minute buttercream. Make sure the layers are level by trimming any domed tops. Spread your filling onto the first layer of cake and then place the second layer of cake on top, flipping it over so that the part that was on the bottom of the cake pan is facing upwards. This will seal in the moisture of the cake. Add a dollop of frosting for the other half of the cake and spread frosting down the side of the cake in the middle to attach the next half of the cake. I'm doing two different fillings, but you could do it all the same or even change the flavour of the cake for the other half. Place another sheet cake down, spread on your filling and then place the top layer. Now we're going to carve the cake into an open book, trimming the middle where the pages dip using a serrated knife. If your cake is crumbly, you can chill it in the fridge or freezer for about half an hour before carving it, and that will prevent it from crumbling. My sheet cake pan is rounded, but I want my book to be angular, so I'm trimming the sides to make sharp corners. Frost your cake with a thin layer of frosting, making sure you completely cover the sides and top. This locks in the moisture and keeps the cake tasting fresh. Now, cut the cake board so it's flush with the cake. You're going to put it on a bigger cake board later, after you've covered it with fondant. Knead white fondant until it's soft and pliable. If you don't knead it, it will crack when you drape it over your cake. Add a bit of powdered sugar if it gets sticky as you're kneading. Then, sprinkle some powdered sugar or cornstarch onto your work surface and roll out the fondant until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. I'm using a silicon rolling pin and turning my fondant over after every few rolls, adding powdered sugar underneath it to make sure it doesn't stick to my counter. My fondant's the right thickness and it's big enough to cover my cake, so I'm sliding my hands underneath it and lifting it over my cake and lowering it, letting it drape over the sides of my cake. I'm smoothing the top first, using my hands to press it into the dip I've made in the middle of the cake, and now using fondant smoothers on the top and sides. You can use your hands to arrange the draping fondant where the sides meet, pushing it in and making a sharp join at the corner. Use your fondant smoothers to press the fondant flat against the cake. Use a sharp knife or pizza cutter to trim off any excess fondant, and then lift the cake onto something smaller than the cake. I'm using my quarter sheet pan. Now you can use your fondant smoothers to go all around the sides again, pressing the fondant flat against the cake all the way down to the bottom of the cake. Then, use a knife to trim off any fondant hanging down below your cake board, holding the knife horizontal and being careful not to angle it because you'll trim the fondant higher than the board. Now it's time to place the cake on a bigger cake board, using rolls of masking tape to secure it. Choose a board that's at least two inches bigger than the cake, so you'll have space to add on the book cover. To mark the pages on the book, use a long knife and indent horizontally lining the knife up each time with the line below so that they're all parallel. Where the cake dips in the middle of the book, use a pizza cutter to make the lines curve down. Now indent the pages along the sides of the book and then at the corners, continuing each indent all the way up to the edge and on both sides so that the pages continue around the corners. To make one of the pages curl up at the corner as if the page is turning, Cut a little triangle of white fondant and stick the long side onto the cake with a paintbrush dipped in water. Then curl up the point of the triangle, folding it over the long side of the triangle to hide it. Roll out the fondant with a book cover. I'm using pale blue and use a pizza cutter or a fondant roller or a sharp knife to trim four strips of equal width. Use a paintbrush to brush the cake board all around the cake about the width of the strips you just cut, and then place those strips around the cake. Run a fondant smoother along the outer edge to make sure it's lined up against the cake and the outer edge is straight. 
Cut them at a diagonal at each corner so that they join neatly. Now we're going to make the nursery rhyme characters. I'm starting with Humpty Dumpty. Tint some fondant brick red using red food colour and add a drop of green. Roll it about half an inch thick and cut it into a rectangle. Mine's about four inches by two inches. Now use a knife to indent the bricks, making lines across the width of the rectangle and then marking the individual bricks. Press very gently. You're going to indent the other side so you don't want to go too deep. Do the other side. And now use a toothpick through the wall so that it's sticking out of the top and the bottom. If your wall is bigger, you can use a wooden skewer instead, or use two toothpicks. Mould some white fondant into an egg shape, but the base can be flat instead of rounded. I'm using blue for the trousers, sculpting a round disc and then indenting it to make space for Humpty Dumpty's body. Brush the trousers with a bit of water and then attach the body. Make two little discs for the legs and attach them with water, and then use a ball tool or your finger to make a well in each one to make space for his legs. Use the ball tool to make a gasping wide open mouth as well. Roll out some white fondant balls, too small, too medium, and too big. The small ones are the eyes, pushed flat before attaching with water, and the big ones are the legs, rolled into logs and then stuck into the trouser legs. They're sticking out in panic as Humpty Dumpty falls off the wall. The medium ones are the arms, secured with toothpicks. They're going to be held out sideways as if he's trying to regain his balance as he falls. To make the arms, I'm rolling the ball into a log, only rolling three quarters of the log and leaving the end as a lump. Next, I'm flattening the lump at the end into a hand and then using a sharp knife to cut slightly into the hand to make the fingers. I'm not sure how many fingers Humpty Dumpty should have, but I'm giving him four. I've pulled out the toothpicks, brushed the holes with a little bit of water, and now I'm skewering the arms into the toothpicks and then pushing them back into the holes. For the shoes, I've made two little brown balls and I'm skewering the legs with toothpicks to give them more support in their sticking out position, and then attaching the shoes. Little black dots for the eyes, two little brown logs to make eyebrows, angled upwards in fear, and then a little red ball for the mouth. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please click the thumbs up button and remember to subscribe for new cake decorating tutorials every week. I'm poking the brick wall into a block of styrofoam, brushing it with water and sliding Humpty Dumpty onto the toothpick. Next I'm making the five little monkeys. I'm making the bed first, a headboard and a baseboard. For the monkeys, I've rolled out all these balls. Here's a list. I'm starting with these medium brown balls for the heads. A brush of water to stick on the faces, which are small tan balls that I've shaped into ovals with my fingers and pressed down so they don't stick out too much from the heads. Then two tiny brown balls for ears, pushed against the head with a small ball tool, which also makes the hollow in the ear. You can also do this with the end of your paintbrush. For the eyes, I'm sticking on two tiny white balls, pressed flat into discs, and then two teeny tiny blue balls. You can use any colour, green, brown or black. I'm using a toothpick to make two little holes for the nose, and then this curved tool for smiling mouths. You could also use the edge of a piping tip, or make little holes to give the monkeys open mouths. Then just stick each head onto a body, which are the big brown balls. Next, make the hands and feet. Take your very small tan balls and push them down to make discs. Then use a knife to indent to make fingers and toes. For the arms and legs, just roll out your small brown balls into little logs. Then arrange the hands and feet on each monkey, brush them with water and stick on the arms and legs. I'm putting one of my monkeys on another one's shoulders, securing them with a the toothpick through the middle. For the bed, just roll out a log of fondant and shape it into a rectangular block by turning it and pressing each side down, and then using a fondant smoother to do the same thing until the sides are flat 
and sharp edges form. Attach the ends with some water and you have a bed. One of my monkeys is going to be playing under a blanket, so I haven't given him arms or legs. I've rolled out some green fondant to match the bed, and I'm wrapping it around him, trying to drape it realistically around him with some creases. I'm sticking on two hands as if they're holding onto the blanket. My last two monkeys are going to be bouncing on the bed. And that's it! <coughs> for Baba black sheep, you'll need lots and lots of little black balls for the wool. Roll a body and wet it with a paintbrush and then cover it with the balls of wool. Then shape a little square of fondant for the legs. With a knife, indent the halfway mark on each side and that marks out the sheep's four legs. Stick on a head, add two little black ears, which are small leaf shapes that you can just shape with your fingers, and give it eyes with white and black fondant balls pushed down into flat discs. Now make three bags of wool by shaping fondant into little blocks and topping them with leftover balls of wool. The nursery rhyme goes, ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. There they are! A nursery rhyme cake wouldn't be complete without twinkle twinkle little star. Roll out yellow fondant thick enough to fit a toothpick through one of the points. Cut out a star with a cutter or freehand it with a knife and give it eyes and a smiling mouth. I'm making the points of the star a bit softer by rounding them out with my finger and then sticking my toothpick through. It will be standing upright so the toothpick needs to go in vertically, using one of the points of the star to hide it. My final nursery rhyme is five little ducks. For the bodies, use your fingers to make points at the back to be little tails. Add a dab of water and then five little balls for heads, a wing on each side, two little eyes, and an orange triangle beak. Now it's the fun part, arranging everything on your bookcake. It's a good idea to put the taller figures at the back so they don't block the shorter figures at the front. Leave space next to each one so you can write out the nursery rhyme with an edible pen. Thanks for watching! Remember to click the red subscribe button and comment below to tell me what cake you'd like me to make next.